there are many myths about Jesus. In these programs, we're talking to some experts who can help us get at the facts behind the myths. We've been looking at the myth that the Bible's accounts of Jesus were made up and altered during a long period while they were passed on by word of mouth. We've explored some of the evidence that these accounts are based on the testimony of people who saw and heard Jesus, of eyewitnesses. In this program, we're looking at more evidence that these accounts are based on eyewitness testimony. One of the things I'm really trying to do in the book, uh, which is fairly new, is not simply to argue that the Gospels are based on eyewitness testimony, but to argue that the Gospels have ways of pointing out that they're based on eyewitness testimony and of identifying the eyewitnesses that they're dependent on for us. Um, because people have sometimes said, well, the Gospels don't seem to claim to be based on eyewitness testimony. Why, sh why should we think they are when they don't claim it themselves? Um, but I think this is partly um, a, me a matter of being aware of the way the Gospels would have been read or heard by the original hearers or readers of the Gospels. Um, and one basic thing that's quite important, I think, is that they would have thought of the Gospels as biographies. It's the obvious category of ancient literature into which the Gospels fell. And they would have been, been therefore thought of as a historical account of someone um, who was within living memory. And the living memory thing is very important because ancient historians, people who wrote history in the ancient world, thought that you could really only write contemporary history. You could only really write about the history that's within memory because the historian must um, get his information from eyewitnesses. Um, in, in the best possible case, the historian could have been an eyewitness himself involved in the events, um, but rarely would he have been involved in all the events he's describing. Um, but at any rate, he should actually meet and interview eyewitnesses. This was essential for, for good history. So I think um, the first readers and hearers of the Gospels, uh, thinking of them as uh, biographies of a contemporary person, uh, would have expected there to be eyewitness testimony. And therefore, they would be looking out for indications of who the eyewitnesses were um, and might pick up uh, clues to that that, 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 we, uh, that we are not looking for, not knowing quite what to look for and, and therefore have missed. So what clues do the Bible's accounts give us that they're using eyewitness testimony? Now one of the key things I think is the use of names in the Gospels um, because uh, the way names appear in the Gospels, if you, um, if you accept major public persons like the High Priest or Pontius Pilate, you would expect those people to be named, people had heard of them. Um, you'd expect the major disciples of Jesus, Peter and John and James, people who play a large part in the story, you'd expect them to be named. But there are lots of people in the Gospels who appear in just one story where they meet Jesus on this or that occasion, someone Jesus heals, uh, someone he uh, helps or speaks to or whatever. Um, and mostly these people do not have names, which again is not surprising, they're not major characters. Um, but some of them do, and that's very significant, I think. Why do these few characters of the minor characters who have names do so. For example, the story of Jesus after the resurrection, joining the two disciples who were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Um, Luke, the gospel writer in this case, tells us the name of one of these disciples. He's called Cleopas and not the name of the other. Why does he do that? Rather, rather puzzling, really. I think it because Cleopas was the man who told the story. Um, and it was known to Luke as, um, as Cleopas's story, and therefore he's named in it. Um, and I think there are a number of cases like that. Bartimaeus the blind beggar is, a, is another nice example, I think. Once you think that the story came from Bartimaeus himself, if you then read the story, it reads exactly as though he were telling it from his perspective, actually. It works very well in that instance. Um, so I think some of these um, stories from minor characters um, are, as it were, identified by the characters being named in the Gospel text. The myth is that the Bible's accounts of Jesus were made up and altered during a long period while they were passed on by word of mouth. 
The fact is that people in the ancient world would have recognized the Bible's accounts as biographies. Such biographies had to be based on living memory. There are different ways the authors show they're using eyewitness testimony. One of these is when they give us the names of minor characters who don't play a central part in the story. Next time, we'll look at more evidence for eyewitness testimony in the accounts, 